All right, in this video, we're going to learn about adding and subtracting radical expressions. We're in section 6.3 of Al Grocer's book, Developmental Math 2. So the first question is, how do you add and subtract radical expressions? And it's very similar to adding and subtracting like terms. So we're going to review a little bit of like terms. If you remember, like terms are terms that have the same variable with the same exponent. And 3 x plus 4x are like terms, so we can add them. How do we add like terms? We add like terms by just adding the coefficients, 3 and 4, and then just keeping the variable the same. When we look at this one, we're going to first identify where are the like terms. So 6x and negative 4x are like terms. We add them together by adding the 6 and the negative 4, and the variable stays the same, so that gives us 2x. The negative 3y and the positive 8y are like terms. When we add negative 3 and positive 8, we get positive 5, and the variable stays the same. When we look at this example, the 2x squared and the 5x squared are like terms. They both have x squared. When we add them, we add the 2 and the 5. The variable stays the same, so that gives us 7x squared. In this example, the negative 3x doesn't have any like terms, so it's just tacking on. The concept of like radicals is very similar. We just treat the, la the radical the same way we would have treated a variable. So 5 squared of 3 plus 2 squared of 3 are like radicals. To add them, we just add the coefficients like we did before. 5 plus 2 is 7, and the radical stays the same, just like a variable did. 2 square root of 5 and 7 square root of 6 are not like radicals. We cannot add these. This is as simple as this expression is going to get because you can't do anything with it if the radicals are not the same. So we're going to combine some like radicals here. We have 3 square root of 2 plus 5 square root of 2. These are like radicals because they both have square root of 2. To combine them, we just add the coefficients. 3 plus 5 is 8. The radical stays the same. In this example, we have a 2 squared of 3 and a negative 6 squared of 3. We add the 2 and the negative 6, we get negative 4 squared of 3. We also have a 4 squared of 5 and another squared of 5. This uh, square root of 5 here has the invisible coefficient of 1. So when we add them together, we're adding 4 plus 1. And that gives us 5, square root of 5. 2 squared of x plus 7 squared of x. These are like radicals. They both have square root of x. We just add the coefficients. 2 plus 7 makes 9 square root of x. 7 squared of 3x plus 2 squared of 3x. They both have square root of 3x, so we just add the 7 and the 2. That makes 9 square root of 3x. In this example, 7 squared of AB, 2 squared of A squared B minus 3 squared of AB. Um, the only like terms or like radicals here are these two because this, this one in the middle has an A squared B, so it's not like these two. We can't add this one to these two, but we can add 7 squared of AB and negative 3 squared of AB to give us 4 squared of AB. And then this other term, 2 squared of A squared B will be hanging on to the end. All right, this last example, uh, there are no like terms or like radicals here. This is as simple as this expression is going to get. You can't add 4x to 3 squared of x because the square root of x is not the same as x. And this 5 doesn't have any x on it at all. So these are not like terms or like radicals, and that's as simple as that one's going to get. Sometimes, to add radicals, we have to simplify them first. Right now, in this first example here, the square root of 50 and the square root of 32 are not like radicals. However, they are also not simplified, because I know each of these has factors that are perfect squares. So the first thing we're going to do is simplify. And you can read the author's explanation here, but I'm going to work it out for myself over here. So the square root of 50... plus the square root of 32. 
when I try to simplify the square root of 50, I know that 25 is a factor of 50. It's a perfect square. 25 times 2. The square root of 25 is 5. So this simplifies to make 5 square root of 2. 32 has a factor of 16. 16 times 2 makes 32. The square root of 16 is 4. The not perfect comes straight down. And once I'm done simplifying the square root of 50 and the square root of 32, I see that they really are like radicals. They both have square root of 2. So to combine them, I just add the coefficients. 5 plus 4 is 9. I have 9 square root of 2. So let's look down here at the examples and see what we've got. The square root of 45 minus the square root of 27. I'm going to simplify first, just like we practiced in the last lesson. 45 is 9 times 5. The square root of 9 is 3, so I have 3 square root of 5. 27 is 9 times 3, so I have 3 square root of 3. Um, turns out these are not like radicals. This one's a square root of 5, and this one's a square root of 3. So this is simple as this is going to get 3 square root of 5 minus 3 square root of 3. When I simplify 5 square root of 8, I can break the 8 up to be 4 times 2. The square root of 4 is 2, so that makes 10 when I multiply it times the 5. And these not perfects come straight down. So this is 10 square root of 2. When I simplify the 18, I have 9 times 2. The square root of 9 is 3. When I multiply it times that 2, I get a 6. And these not perfects come straight down. They are like radicals now. They both have square root of 2. So I just add the coefficients and I get 10 plus 6 is 16, square root of 2. All right, when I try to simplify this one, the 24 is 4 times 6, and the x squared is perfect. So I can take the square root of these perfects, and that will be 2x, Multiplied times that 2 that was out front, I get 4x. And my not perfects come straight down. So I have 4x squared of 6. Now over here, I have a 54, which I know is 9 times 6. The square root of 9 is 3. So that 3 is going to get multiplied times the x. And that makes 3x square root of 6. So now when I add these, I have square root of 6, square root of 6, and so I just add the coefficients. 4x minus 3x makes 1x square root of 6. Whoa, this is a big one. We actually have four terms that we need to simplify here. I wonder if we have enough room. Okay. So the square root of 32 is 16 times 2, and the x has only 1, so it has to go in the not perfects. So that's this term right here. When I broke apart the 32, I have 16 times 2. All right, the square root of 16 is 4. I'm going to use a little bit of shorthand here. I hope you guys don't get lost. Instead of writing a whole other line, I'm going to cross this out, and I'm going to put a 4 up here, because I know the square root of 16 is 4. That 4 gets multiplied times this 2, and I'm going to write that result here. 4 times 2 is 8, and my not perfects will come straight down. So I have 8 square root of 2x. Maybe I'll be able to fit it all in if I do it that way. Here, I have a negative 6. But the 5y here, there are no perfect squares in there. 5 doesn't have any factors that are perfect squares. And this y is alone, so you can't really even break that apart. So I'm just going to bring it down as 6 square root of 5y. We don't even need to try and break it down. In this term, I have the 200. 
which I know is 100 times 2. And this single x can't be broken down, so it has to go over here with the 2 in the not perfects. All right, the square root of 100 is 10, gets multiplied times that 5, and that gives us 50 square root of 2x. On this last term, the 125 is 25 times 5, and the y is alone, so it goes in the not perfects. The square root of 25 is 5. It gets multiplied times this 3. I have 15 square root of 5y. All right, let's see what we have. Are any of these like radicals? I have a 2x, a 5y, oh, another 2x, and another 5y. All right, so it looks like this one, 8 square root of 2x and 50 square root of 2x are like radicals because they both have square root of 2x. When I add them, I add the 8 and the 50, and that gives me 58 square root of 2x. And it also looks like negative 6 square root of 5y and 15 square root of 5y are like radicals because they both have square root of 5y. Negative 6 plus 15 is 9. Positive 9 square root of 5y.